Hi, Tiffany. Thanks for helping my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Hi, Nathan. My name is Tiffany. I am here in Texas. I like to sew and I like to sail. Just throw that in. And that's a little bit about me. I'd like to ask you a little bit more about the sailing because one of the one of the things I keep dreaming about doing is potentially sailing around the world, but I don't know how to sail, so Same. it's kind of, uh, uh, yeah. But uh, so how long have you been sailing? Well, um, in Corpus, I started sailing the Wednesday before Halloween 2018. Wow. And wow. I was obsessed before that, but that really solidified it. So there are Wednesday races, and um, a couple of weekend races throughout the year. And I've been lucky to crew for um, some really friendly, patient, I guess I'm teachable enough that I've been <laughs> taught a little bit over this time. So that's, that's how I learned to sail, just crewing for someone else. Is that still what you primarily do, or do you have a sailboat, or do you rent them, or what do you do? Yeah, that's what I like to do for fun. Um, primarily, I crew for someone else's boat, and um, no, I don't have a sailboat. <laughs> uh, but uh, seriously, you you want to sail around the world? Yeah, I mean, I would like to go twice. I like to call it a, a victory lap. <laughs> Would you go in the opposite direction the second time? Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'll go whichever way the boats are going. <laughs> maybe maybe you take the Magellan route, so you couldn't go through Panama and you couldn't go through the Suez, and then later on you could take like the modern day route compared to. Hey, I would take three if that were an option. Um, I guess how. How likely are you to do that? Well, it's um, that's a good question. How likely is it? I don't think it's very likely, but sometimes the odds are in your favor. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, you would, I would take a baby step before that right very likely I would do a longer leg that wasn't just like all the way around the world but um really you know longer than the Gulf of Mexico which is the most I've done so far maybe, maybe like uh Corpus to San Diego or, or, or Corpus to like Lisbon or something well, they they have a little races like I mean, there's the Bermuda race. There's um, you know you can go from California to Hawaii. I would I would happily do any of those races. It'd be um, a little scary, but I would do it. Yeah, my wife says uh, she would be able to go, be willing to go sailing with me as long as she can always see the shore, which led me to. <laughs> Um, this thing called the Great Loop. Have you heard of it? I have, yeah. Yeah, it seems like that would be a good way to get started. I mean, you're in the U.S. the whole time, and, you know, it's kind of like a, a neat, I mean, I'm not sure you could sail it. Like, there's some low clearances in places, and, um, you know, maybe you could have a telescopic uh, mass. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's... Um... I think it's interesting enough that if that were my rule, I might even change it. Just being able to see the shore isn't really that much of a guarantee of like, nothing too exciting will happen. <laughs> you know, you wanna take your excitement in like small doses, like, uh, you know, as opposed to like a huge excitement all at once. Yeah, yeah, baby steps. Baby step. But you sound like an explorer. I do. <laughs> I think 
I think adventure might be my favorite genre of stories. So that's, that's fitting. <laughs> well, I was wanting to ask you about taking adventures um, beyond the earth. And I guess uh, just looking at like professional astronauts, uh, did you know that astronaut, that NASA is planning to send astronauts back to the moon again for the first time since 1972? Yes. Why so long is part of my question. You know, why, why such a long hiatus? I, I mean, my answer to that is it costs so much and the reason people were willing to spend that money was to beat the Russians. And once we beat them, then, you know, most of the people didn't see the point. It's a good answer. And the research in the meantime really helps us know what to, what to expect about what we're getting into. So I guess it's about time. <laughs> Um, so you already knew that there were plans to go back to the moon. Did I get that right? Got that right. Um, how did you find out? Oh, how did I find out? I guess it's just a topic with um, some friends, like-minded friends. Um, Really, the more I think about it, I think, how could I not know? <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the words in, out. In 2019, when I started this project, uh, my plan was to go up to random people at coffee shops and on the street and at the stores, which I did up into the COVID lockdowns. And I, I've started that back up somewhat. And I would say of the non-space people that I interview, only about 20% of them know we're going back to the moon. I was wondering if that surprises you. It doesn't surprise me, um, but it excites me that there's kind of like a new enthusiasm, you know, like when people don't know, you can kind of like get that, that fresh perspective again, like, yeah, go to the moon. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I know. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised. But, you know, I've gotten some responses uh, uh, from people. They're like, well, isn't that where the astronauts go? Yeah, so, I mean, there are some people that, that think we've been going to the moon continuously, but um, they would be disappointed to find out the truth. Man, game changer. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess. Every time they go to the ISS, like, hey, I thought they're at the moon already. Yeah, I know. My wife asked me that question a lot is, where are they going? I'm like, in orbit? But that's like, that's a vague statement. That's like seeing a plane take off and you're like, where is it going? You're like, in the air? You know, it's like a... <laughs> up and away. Up and away. <laughs> you know? Well, that's great. You know, it's like, uh, yeah. So, but um, what excites you about going to the moon? What excites me about going to the moon is growing plants. Maybe um, things that are easy to do on Earth but hard to do on the moon could, you know, increase our gratitude for what's so easy to do here on earth. That's an interesting thing. I was, um, I, I've gone to a restaurant where um, you, you put all your, your phones and watches and anything that might give off any light into like a, a locker. And then they lead you into this completely dark room and um, you're served by uh, seeing impaired, um, uh, you know, people. 
and um, they feed you food, but they don't tell you what they're going to give you. And you have oh to goodness. fill around and eat and you have no visual per perspective of anything. And then afterwards you go out and they, they, they show you what you ate. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Where's this restaurant? Um, this one was in London, but I think they have one in New York as well. It's a French uh, phrase that means in the dark. Like, I forget what it means. Um, I have to look it up. But whenever you talked about going to the moon and trying to do things that are hard and using that to appreciate things back here on Earth, that, that experience kind of popped in my mind. Cool. And I've heard there are glasses you can wear that like show you what it would be like to experience like different kind of visual handicap levels. Like there are different kind of visual impairments, like not just being blackout blind, but I don't know. There was um, an article I read about that and it was actually connected with the sail blind program. But um, yeah, there are definitely so many things we take for granted that without really experiencing the difference, there's, there's just no ballpark for like how easy we have it. <laughs> I know like um, imagine not having any arms or hands or even not having one arm or hand, you know, I mean, that would be kind of life-changing. It's like, I, I heard a, um, a saying, you know, before you criticize somebody, you should walk a mile in their shoes. Um, of course, it was a joke because uh, the punchline is um, you're a mile away from them and you, and you have their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Giving their shoes back. <laughs> uh, but um, if it was safe and affordable, would your adventurism take you into space? Um, yeah, I would go to space, especially if there were a job in space. Um, as far as a vacation, I can't see myself doing that but um like if they needed if, the, if there were a space race <laughs> and they needed crew then I would volunteer how, how far would you consider going just to orbit to the moon and back or would you consider immigrating to Mars earth is pretty great I I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't want to leave Permanently. Uh, I'd want to come back to Earth. A few years on Mars, I think you'll see really how great Earth really is. <laughs> I feel like I've, I have an appreciation for Earth as is. I don't, I don't need the absence to make my heart grow fonder for Earth. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of interesting back in 1968, we had Apollo 8 uh, go around the moon for the first time. And the most popular photo from that trip was not any lunar photo, but was a picture of the Earth from the moon, that famous Earthrise photo. And within a few years of that, we had the first Earth Day, the EPA got created. Uh, you know, there was kind of like this, um, the, this, you know, awareness that I, I think maybe Apollo helped to contribute to um, in the sense that Earth is, is not as indestructible and as huge as it might feel from our day-to-day -day experience. Yeah, pretty resilient, but there's gotta be a limit. And I don't wanna find it. <laughs> Yeah, there's this joke I, I saw. It had all the uh, uh, planets got together for some conference or something, you know, and Earth is like, oh, I'm sick. And they're like, uh, 
what's wrong? And it's like, oh, I got a bad case of humans. And the other planets are like, oh, don't worry, it goes away. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> that would be us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so in like 200 years, um, where do you see humanity? Wherever we set our course to, I think that's where we'll go. So we should watch where we're going and course correct, right? Keep an eye on it. Like wherever we set our intentions to, I think we'll end up going. Did do you think uh, we'll still be 100% Earth-centered? Or, or do you think we'll actually have parts of humanity living off of Earth, that we've actually made steps into really expanding beyond the Earth? I think we will expand beyond the Earth. And I think we'll still be on Earth in 200 years. <laughs> and I think the farther we stretch, the more we'll like go back to our, our roots. Um, yeah, we're just like a little baby bird in a nest right now. But, but we think we own the entire tree. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. So imagine this, um, you or one of your descendants uh, actually does immigrate to Mars. And it's 200 years in the future. So this would be your great, 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 great grandchild. I'm not sure how many greats it is, but I, I know she's really great, but that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but she's uh, in high school. She's lived on Mars her entire life and she's in history class. And they're doing okay. like this paper on the 2020s, you know, just like we might do a paper on the 1820s. And, you know, she comes across this video and she's like, oh, this is great grandma, great, 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 great grandma Tiffany, you know, really great grandma here. <laughs> and uh, she's like, give me some nugget that has set my paper apart from all the others about what happened in the 2020s, you know. What, what would you offer up? Okay, this great little one for your school paper. Um, I think you should just know we have really great food. <laughs> Thanks to Earth. For some reason, I think that could be the number one complaint moving forward. Maybe food won't be as great as it was back on Earth. Yeah. Did you see the Matrix? Oh, maybe I should tell her a hiding spot for like some seeds or something. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some secret code. Go here for some really great seeds for Watermelon. <laughs> uh, of course, they may have something like um, the replicator from Star Trek. So, uh, yeah, the or, Jetsons. Are the Jetsons, yeah. Both. I wonder if it's a play on like your memory of food or your sense. Well, anyway, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to know how they. Replicate food. Yeah, it might be more. It might be more like uh, Willy Wonka and uh, the bubble gum you know, <laughs> turns into something. Yeah, yeah. So for the future, two hundred years from now, I would like them to just know that I love our food. <laughs> and that's pre replicator <laughs> that'll probably be wild in 200 years like wow they didn't even have replicators for food i, I just wonder you know the the um 
brain computer interface is something that we've been developing. Yeah. So, you know, you could pretty much maybe make yourself feel like you're eating anything and not really know the difference. Sure. I well, guess there's some kind of bridge where someone has to like figure out how to code that in. The sensation of eating this would translate to, well, yeah, I'm out of my depth here. Well, you might have a professional uh, eating artist, right? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they like eat like some type of food and they record their brain waves and then you can subscribe to like food flicks <laughs> and, and uh, actually play it back. Yeah. So it feels like you're experiencing that same eating, you know. Yeah. Man, what are they in for 200 years from now? <laughs> yeah, I think it's unreal, probably. Hit it. Yeah. It's like, well, those were pretty much the questions I had. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about or any questions for me? Oh, let's see. I think I, I think my first question, you know, just why it's been so long, but that's, it's been pretty well covered. So no, don't have any other questions. Thank you, though. <laughs> Thank you. I really uh, was glad to talk to you, and I hope you really do um, sell around the world. Oh, likewise, and thank you to you. <laughs> okay, well, have a good rest of your evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.